Israel United in Christ, we're here to show you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who you are according to the Bible. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter uh, 14 and 34. One thing we have to do is subdue our own thoughts. Our own thoughts is telling us to do all these different things today. It's telling us to buy a Chiefs jersey. It's telling us to worry about what's going on with the Chiefs in the playoffs. But we are not worried about how to fix our communities up. Read 2nd Ezra chapter 13. 14 verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts. We have to reform our hearts. Our heart is our mind according to the body. Why do we have to reform it? Because we focus on everything but the Bible. Everything but God, like the officer has been bringing out. We so focus on the chiefs and what's going to go on tomorrow that we don't even know that that's not going to bring any prosperity to our neighborhoods. We are still going to be on the bottom whether they win or lose. And yes, those brothers that are playing in that game are oppressed. You may think of them as being very successful, being somebody that's set apart, but as soon as they say one thing that goes against what the owner wants them to say, they are kicked off the team. They are blackballed. They make no more money. If they even take a knee for their own people, they get blackballed out of the league. But we so worried about the NFL. How is it that tomorrow is the second day of Black History Month, but we are so focused on the whitest event in America? You need to take time to think about that. This is supposed to be Black History Month, but they flooded with all of their things, all the glory of the Grecians. They give you the Super Bowl. They give you the All-Star Game. All these things in your month. But what do they teach you? All they teach you is George Washington Carver founded the peanut. They don't give you no true history of who you are, where you were before slavery, and where you come from, who you can be. But we are so focused on the societies and what they love to do. We focus on the NBA, the NFL, more than God's words. Why? Because we need to read that verse again. Second Ezra 14, 34. Therefore, if so be, that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts. We have to reform our hearts. Why? Give me Mark 7, 21. Our hearts are only focused on everything that goes against this Bible. We may say that we love God. We may say that we uh, he heard our call. But all our actions show something totally opposite. Read. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. How is it evil thoughts? Because all your thoughts right now are focusing on tomorrow. I'm going to buy this fifth. We're going to get drunk. We're going to eat some pork. We're going to smoke weed. These are your thoughts right now. Your thoughts are on a Super Bowl party instead of on God's words. Instead of on today is the Sabbath day. How do we know that? Because we got people up here selling Chiefs jerseys on the Sabbath day. What does the Bible say about selling on the Sabbath day? Give me Nehemiah 13 and 15. This is what we need to realize, that we are, all these matters of burdens are going on on the Sabbath day. Us being men of God, we're going to stand up here and we're going to contest those things. We're going to fight against those things. Why? Because this is what we're doing. We're fighting for our freedom. We're fighting for our, our, our heritage. Read. Nehemiah 13, 15. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and lading asses as also wine grapes and figs and all manner of burdens with all manner of burdens those chief jerseys are burdens right now what are those going to do for our people how is buying a chief jersey going to raise our people up to a higher estate how is it going to stop black on black crime how is it going to stop us from getting gunned down in the street how is it going to teach us who we truly are according to the bible it's not all these things are burdens they're pushing us further and further away from the most high god Half you don't even, most of you don't even know that you're an Israelite according to the Bible. You still believe that you're so-called African American. You still believe that you're black. You still believe that you can do anything you want to. All you got to do is pray and ask God for forgiveness. That's a complete lie. These churches have been pushing these lies for years and years. It's time for us to come back to our true nationality. It's time for our women to stop wearing dresses. I mean, stop wearing pants. I'm sorry. Stop wearing pants and put on a dress. Stop dressing modestly. Stop smoking. Stop letting men lay with you who has no value in you, who is not looking at you to marry you. Stop giving these men children that are not being men. They're not wanting to marry you first. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law 
even his prayer shall be abomination. And you think God is hearing you when you're not doing anything that the Bible tells you to do? He's not. Your prayer is just like you is an abomination to him. What do we got to do? We got to come back to his law, statutes, and commandments. Stop letting people lie to us and tell us that God loves the whole world. That tells us that God knows your heart. Well, yeah, God does know your heart. And he's telling your heart is desperately wicked. All right, it's time for you to come back to his law, statutes, and commandments. Men, start running your household again. Stop letting women rule over you. Stop letting women control the household. You are supposed to be a man. God set the man in charge. But what do we do? We don't want to accept our role, so we don't even want to be in the house anymore when the woman starts bucking up to us. Why? Because we don't know how to be men. Read. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So this is the order that God set up. But we, are, we as men have to enforce this order. How do you enforce it? You don't enforce it by hitting on a woman. You don't enforce it by being uh, mentally abusive to a woman. You enforce this order by keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of God. By teaching your, your young men how to be a man. By teaching your wife how to love you according to the scriptures. By teaching your wife how she's supposed to raise up her daughters according to the scriptures. This is how you enforce order. You enforce order by first doing what you're supposed to do as a man. When you do what you're supposed to do, you can't expect you, you can start putting everything else in order. You can't expect a woman to follow order if you're not in order. Read. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. We don't say this to be um, misogynist. We don't say this to put down our women. We say this to protect our women. Because if you don't have structure and order in the household, well, that's why you see over 65,000 women missing. Why? Because they try to be independent women. They try to be out here doing their own things, just like the sister right here. All we try to do is teach you love and respect. But you come up and hate. Give me uh, Amos. Amos with 5 and 10. This is the problem. We are trying to show our people how to come up out of these uh, situations that we're in society. We are trying to show our men how to protect our women from getting kidnapped like they do every single day. But what do you got? You got women like this that's telling us that she hates us. Read. The book of Amos chapter 5 verse 10. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. They hate him that's, that rebukes in the gates or that corrects in the gates. Why? Because correction is not always comely. I'd rather you correct me now and I get a little hurt about it. And then when Christ comes back and he puts me to death. What's the Israelites? And that's the problem with our people. This is the problem with our people. Our people are given over to a strong delusion. And they are hatred for their people who actually has their best interests at heart. Right. Our people need to come, wake up and realize that there's only one way to eternal life. And that's by keeping the commandments of God. If you don't have structure in your life, you are not going to keep the commandments of God. Structure comes with order. And that's what we don't have as a nation of people. We don't have order. We don't have structure. We don't have discipline. How do we know that? Because we don't even know who we are. You can't have the order and discipline of the Bible by calling yourself African American. They don't go hand in hand together. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 16. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. But he that despiseth his ways shall die. He that despiseth the ways of this Bible is going to die. Why? Because you don't keep the commandments. You're not looking over your own soul. We are trying to give you the keys to eternal life right now. Give me 7 and 2, Proverbs. We're trying to show you how to live. Right now, you are not living. Focusing on this Chiefs game, you are not living. Thinking about Kobe Bryant, as unfortunate as it may be, you are not living. Read. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. You have to keep the laws as the apple of your eye, and that's the only way you're going to live. You can't keep the laws if you don't know that you're in error. You can't keep the laws if you don't know that women are not supposed to be wearing pants. Women are not supposed to be wearing immodest apparel. Women are not supposed to be usurping authority over a man. Women are supposed to be learning in silence. But what's wrong with our people? Give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse 28. 
This is the problem. We are subject to these curses. No matter how rich you are or how poor you are, you cannot escape these curses. Read. Deuteronomy 28.28. 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. He is smitten us with blindness. How? Because we don't know that what right now what you're receiving is the ways of life. You don't know that right now this Bible is the only way that's going to keep you from being hit by a car when you go out in the streets. Right. By, by getting a bad uh, batch of drugs and being bugged out of your mind forever. You don't know that. Why? Because you don't know the commandments of God. All we know is Chiefs this, Lakers that. That's all we focused on, but we're not focused on what we need to do to make it out of this uh, this captivity that we're in. And yes, we are in captivity. How do we know that? Because we are on the bottom of society. Right. This world was made for us, but we are sitting on the bottom of society. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Because this is one thing that's not put pushed in the black man's mind enough. You are special according to God. Read. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, God has chosen you to be a special people. You have not heard that enough all your life. They're not telling you that in church. They're not telling you that in schools. They're not telling you that anywhere in the world that you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are special according to God. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And we are above all people on the face of the earth. Are we spewing out hatred? No, we're not. We're spewing out God's words. We're giving you God's order, God's structure according to the Bible. Read. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 2 that I might leave my people and go from them for they be all adulterers an assembly of treacherous men and they bend their tongue like bows for lies but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth and this is why God has left his people why because we are not valiant for the truth we are not fighting to keep God's commandments but what are we doing we're lying down to assimilate to this world we are not fighting to keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. Read. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. And she, it's just like the sister you see right here. She's doing all these evil gestures, all these evil actions. And we got people laughing at her, but they don't realize that she's going up against the words of the Most High God. She's going up against the Creator right now. She doesn't know that her actions is going to damn her to death. That's the problem with our people. We have to come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments and realize who we are. And now this brother's about to fight a sister. Why? Because this brother doesn't know that he's not supposed to be doing that. Why? Because we are an evil generation. Read that. Verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Every neighbor will walk with slanders, as you see there. This brother's about to fight a sister. And why? Because his mind is not right in the first place. And what do our people do? Our people laugh at these things. Our people look at these things, pull their phone out, world star. Why? Because we don't know that that's an evil thing according to God. We are so satisfied with seeing evil all the time that we laugh at it. It's time for us to come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments. It's time for you men to grow up. Grow up and be a man. Stop settling for these little childish things. Grow up. Men, stop hitting women. Brothers, stop selling drugs to each other. Grow up and be a man. This whole community is in shambles because we don't want to be men. You have to be a man to take back this nation. You have we used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.